State of Origin Game 2 is just around the corner. I'm Paul Jodka, joined by former New South Wales winger Josh Mansour to preview this all-important encounter. Thanks for joining us. Very important encounter, Paul. I can't wait for this one. Well, New South Wales went down in Game 1, of course. Hence, they've made some key changes. In comes Dylan Edwards, Mitch Moses, Latrell Mitchell and Cam Murray. Just what will these four big-time players bring to the side? Well, the effort areas for Dylan Edwards is obviously one of the most informed fullbacks the past four years. Um, I thought it was, you know, hard done by getting that quad strain for game one, just missing out there. But obviously, big decision to keep either Teddy or Dylan Edwards, and it looks like Michael Maguire has had to make that hard decision and brought back Dylan Edwards, which I think it's justified. You know, I think he deserves his opportunity. So uh, I'm really, really looking forward to that one. But. The one person I'm really looking forward to is Latrell Mitchell, the Trellinator. Um, I think he's someone that really lifts all the players around him. Yeah. Um, he's in his uh, most comfortable position, in my opinion, in the centres. Uh, he won't be tested as much at fullback, so I feel like as well, get him a bit, bit more early ball, test out Valentine Holmes one on one, and hopefully create a two on one. It's his stage. There he is. Look, at <laughs> I, just, I just love his passion as well. Like yeah. he's, uh, he's an extremely passionate player, yeah. um, and I think that's one of his key traits that really lifts this New South Wales mm. Blues team. You know, when we think of State of Origin, we about passion and I think Latrell Mitchell, Latrell Mitchell exuberates that. The only thing I'm concerned about is with those four inclusions is we're not battle, battle hardened, we're all coming back from injuries, yes. uh, We don't got the, the players aren't fully match fit, that's mm. the reality. Um, I am confident that these players are comfortable in this um, in this arena, they, mm. have been, they have been there countless times. Cameron Murray is a massive um, in for me as well. Yeah. Um, you saw his performance um, last week with South Sydney and a massive win against the Broncos. And, you know, I feel like he's got a lot of leadership qualities about him, particularly through the middle. And I feel like we lack that. I know game one was kind of thrown in disarray after the um, send off, but I think Cameron Murray's going to be massive, particularly in our go forward. He's just so fast off the mark. He finds mm. his front nine times out of ten. And he's got great service playing at the back to yeah. our halves. So, yeah, massive game ahead. Can't wait. A key aspect of the halves play that was talked about after game one was the kicking game. Yeah. Just how will Mitch Moses help in that department? Oh, Matt, it's his greatest strength, Mitch. Um, he's probably the second best kick in the competition behind Nathan Cleary. Um, he's the second best halfback in New South Wales behind Nathan Cleary. So uh, I think Mitch, he's got a really good calming influence as well in the team. He's very vocal. Um, and not only that, I feel like uh, he's got a bit of ego about him. I feel like mm. that's what we need for State mm. of Origin. You, know? you need a bit of swagger. You need someone to really own the stage. And every time Mitch has had that opportunity, he's owned the moment. Yeah. And uh, I feel like we definitely missed him for game one. Um, big opportunity for Mitch now to hopefully continue his Origin career going forward. And the forward rotation, it got a little jumbled with the early send-off in Game 1. Do you think Coach Michael Maguire reverts to a more tried-and-true formula? The bench does look a bit more typical, shall we say. Yeah. Connor Watson, of course, coming in for Hudson Young. I think both sides as well. You know, question marks around Queensland with Selwyn Cobbo on the bench, but, you know, they've got now a couple of extra forwards mm. on the bench. And, you know, Michael Maguire has stuck traditional. I think Connor Watts is a massive inclusion for us as well yeah. in terms of his utility and variety of positions he can play for us. Um, again, another player, you know, a bit undercooked, hasn't had that much yeah. game time. Yeah. He is going to a very high-pressure game. It's a do-or-die clash for New South Wales, but I think he can do the job. Uh, I opted to go with Matt Burden on the bench, but it makes sense why they went with Connor. I think Connor's very, he's conditioned to play in the middle. Mm. You know, he's played in hooker, he's played in the halves. He's had a lot of traffic come at him this year. Berto, not so much, you know, obviously playing his preferred position at, uh, at half 5'8", uh, um, and there's probably other position you could put him in the centres, but yeah. I feel like Connor Watson adds so many... The ultimate of, utility. The ultimate, <laughs> and we've got him, thank God. <laughs> Let's turn to Queensland now. Coach Billy Slater is not sitting on his hands despite winning game one. Felice Carfusi and Kurt Cape will join the bench. What experience. It's a clear effort to match it with the Blues pack yep. and the experience. Yeah, the experience is the, one, the biggest one for me. Um, Felice has been, you know, remarkable, particularly playing, I don't want to call him old, but like he is on the other end of the spectrum when he, on his age. <laughs> uh, but he has so much experience. He's a proven winner every time yeah. he's put in the Queensland jumper on. And again, Kurt Capel is another great player in terms of his variety of positions he can play. He has played centre before. He is a traditional back mm. roller. Um, you can even start him at, at lock. I'll, yep. bit, I'll have no dramas with that. Um, Queensland are a very lethal, lethal side. Um, but yeah, you obviously see Selwyn Cobbo being opted mm. not to make that bench position. Um, and it looks like he's, uh, it's Kirk Capel that took his spot. Yeah. Tom Dearden was outstanding, deputising for the injured Cam Munster in Game 1. How crucial will his play be with the Maroons' chances for clinching this year? So. You know, he just plays above his weight. You know, He's very inspirational in that sense. He um, he accommodates Daly Cherry Evans quite nicely, mm. I think. Um, and he's not afraid to make a decision on the run. Yep. If he sees something, he plays a lot of eyes up footy. If he sees it, he'll go 
for it. And nine times out of ten, he makes the right call. Um, you know, he's, he's probably the main reason why the Cowboys are going in the right direction. Uh, he's a He's a young, um, nippy half, um, but again, I feel like these games, um, he really relishes the big challenge, and um, there's no secret, J David Cherry Evans, you know, again, he's ageing as well. Um, he'll definitely be the, the main man when David Cherry Evans hangs up the boots. And we didn't get to see Reese Walsh for much of the game after the injury and subsequent send-off, but how will he be looking to inject himself into game two? Uh, he has to be targeted. There's no, yeah. there's no, it's a no-brainer for me. Like this, just like, give him an inch, and he'll take 40 meters, 50 meters, yeah. stuff like that. Um, so he's going to be their biggest threat, in my opinion. Um, but Liam Martin, we saw what he said coming out. You know, New South Wales hitman. Yeah. We're definitely going to target him, and, and rightly so. Yeah. You know, he's their best player, um, and you know he's elusive. Uh, you can't get him one on one. You've got to hit him dual contact every single time. And the biggest concern I have is. What's going to happen when he's, uh, the Queenslanders are going to be attacking Latrell Mitchell? He hasn't mm. played centre in quite a while. Mm. Latrell Mitchell, the uh, decision making is definitely going to get tested. And does he come in and jam Reese Walsh nice and early, or will he paddle back and wait for Jerome Luai to come and number up um, with him? Targeting, I was sweeping out the yeah, right targeting that. Yeah, do, doing that, Reese Walsh is so fast at the back, yeah. and he can really burn yeah. that third man defender quite nicely. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit nerve wracking uh, being a New South Wales supporter and knowing that he's in, Bruce Walsh is in that side, but um, I'm sure he, uh, the, the New South Wales Blues got a target around him. It's going to be a great game. The Blues have an excellent record at the MCG. They've yes. won four of the five games played there. Can they continue to trend and keep the series alive? Or will Queensland win and make it three straight series victories? Going with um, the, obviously the hoodoo, um, with four, five, four out of five is a, is a quite nice um, uh, trend. Uh, I like to go with New South Wales, put in bias aside. I just feel like that will suit the conditions more. Uh, cold, dewy. Uh, I think the power game is going to suit us quite nicely. And it's do or die. Like We've got to put everything mm -hmm. on the line, not only for Michael Maguire himself as a coach, but also everyone playing in that New South Wales jumper. So, you know, we are playing against Queensland in game three. It'll be nice to see um, that game go one to one. Yeah, absolutely. It's real rivalry, the MCG. It's one of the great sporting venues in the world. To witness a part of the rivalry, you can go to nrl.com slash tickets to get yours today. If you can't get to the game, you can still watch it on Channel 9 and Sky Sports New Zealand. Kickoff is at 8.05 p.m.